Bebop was invented by the great jazz heroes Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker and Thelonious Monk and probably a lot more people in that time. Great musicians, all of them. Great musicians. The jazz was suddenly played in a new way, much more hip. These people created a new sound, a new way to play jazz music. One of the characteristics of the bebop is the chromatic sound, the chromatic approach to some of these notes you're playing. A small part of the chromatic bebop playing is the so-called bebop scale. The bebop scale is of course coming out of the bebop tradition. With the bebop scale you get this characteristic chromatic sound. In this video I'll go through some ways to play the bebop scale, the dominant bebop scale and of course give you tools so you can play the bebop scale in your own soloing. I have made some exercises which will enable you to directly apply this into your own practice and later directly put this into your own playing. Use the bebop scale right now to play great jazz music. In the end of the video I'll of course give you some extras that's coming up to 251 links where I'm using the bebop dominant scale. Great exercise and examples coming up right now. Hi, I'm Søren Bellegaard and welcome to Søren's Online Saxophone Lessons. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel and checking out this video on bebop scales. So please hit subscribe, that's great support. If you really want to get a lot of value out of this lesson, get the whole text and all examples transcribed on my Patreon page. Check the link here. Get my great saxophone practice PDF and subscribe to my newsletter. You will get a download link when you have subscribed. Let's get on with it. This is the bebop scale. The dominant bebop scale is commonly used on the dominant chord. So the fifth degree of our normal major or minor scale, the fifth degree. On a common 2-5-1, you will definitely play the bebop scale on the five. The dominant bebop scale is derived from the normal diatonic dominant scale, which you see here. To get the bebop scale out of this dominant scale, we add a chromatic step between the root and the seventh. In this scale, we'll have the root, which is the G, and the seventh, which is the F, we add the F sharp. This is in the rhythm key of C major, so we're using the fifth degree of C major, the G, and we're working with the G7, playing the bebop scale now on the G7 chord. You see, we add this extra note right there. The chromatic F sharp step between the seventh and the root. The chromatic step is an additional note and is only functional when in combination played with the F and the G. It's not a note in the scale. You cannot play this note as an extra, oh there, this is part of, 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 of the scale and I can leave other stuff out. So in the bebop scale, the F, F sharp and the G is one unit. The functionality of the bebop scale only works when you have those three notes together. What is the function of the extra note in the bebop scale? When we play the bebop scale up or down, beginning on the beat of a bar, all of the chord notes fall on the beat. So you have the root, the third, the fifth and the seventh, the G, the B, the D, the F. <laughs> You would want these notes, the target notes of G7, to be very clear in your bar. So you want these notes, those four notes of the G7 you want on the beat of your bar to spell out the G7 function. When we look at the bebop scale, you will get this effect. When you just play up and down the bebop scale starting on the beat. Look at this example. <laughs> the beat you get all the G7 
notes, all the target notes, all the chord notes of the G7, you get them on the beat exactly as you want. What you also see now is it does not matter which beat we begin on. We can begin on the first, second, third, or fourth beat of the four beat bar. It doesn't matter. You will always, as long as you begin on the whole beat, you will always have the target notes, the chord notes on the beats which you want when spelling out this G7 chord. This is due to the chromatic note which adds this extra, the eighth note in the bar. So when you have eight notes in the bar, you will start with the same note as you ended on in the next bar. Coming up, know your bebop scale and practice your bebop scale. To be able to use your bebop scale in improvisation, you need to know it very well. You have four starting points in the bebop scale. One for each basic chord note in the G7. I'm talking about the G, the B, the D and the F. Four starting points. You should know the bebop scale from all these points going up or going down. There are a couple of simple exercises you can do to get the bebop scale under your fingers. We begin the bebop scale starting on our four different target notes going up the scale. We keep it in one bar. First exercise, playing this bebop scale up. We begin on the G, the root of the G7, going up the scale to the F7 notes. The second example, starting the bebop scale from the B of the G7 chord, starting from the third, playing seven notes up the bebop scale. Next step is starting the bebop scale on the D, the fifth of the G7. The last starting point when we go up the scale is of course the F. Starting on the seventh degree of the G7 chord, the F going up the bebop scale. The next examples and exercises will be going down the bebop scale. We will start on the F going down the bebop scale. The F is of course the seventh degree of the G7. The next step will be starting on the D, the fifth of the bebop scale. We go on with the third of the G7, the B. We go on with the third, the B, going down the bebop scale. And the last exercise example is from the root of the G7 going down the bebop scale. These were the basics of the bebop scale, the G7 bebop scale. You can practice these going up and going down, like this. Improvisation. Let's get on with the improvisation right now. Two bebop licks coming up now. You start getting your bebop scales into your fingers and you know that on that dominant chord you're always hitting the mark 
because of the extra chromatic bebop note. You can play the scales up, down, and you can actually change direction in the middle of the scale. You are always coming out right if you use the bebop scale and you start on the beat. To get a good insight on how you can put this directly into your playing, I have made two 251 licks where I use the bebop scale on the dominant so you can get a good view on how does this actually work. The first 251 lick coming right here. I'll explain the 251 bebop lick here. I start surrounding the third of the D minor chord with the G and the E going to the F. I jump down to the A on the D minor chord going up that minor chord A, C, E, actually surrounding the D with the C and the E, going down the scale, hitting the B on the G7 chord, running up the bebop scale over oh, this wonderful bebop scale, and you see the F sharp as my bebop note going up there, ending on the C major chord, going down this wonderful arpeggio, it's actually an E minor triad, going down B, G, E, B, and ending on this wonderful, the sixth of the C major, the A. The second 2-5-1 lick using the bebop scale on the G7 chord. <laughs> to that high G, playing E, G around the F, going down that scale, G, F, E, D, hitting the D, the fifth on the G7 chord, going still down the scale, ending on the B, the third of the G7, going up the bebop scale and adding this wonderful F sharp just before we hit the G on the C major scale, we are playing a lovely A minor seven chord down the G major and surrounding the B at the end. We have come to the end of this lesson, but before we end, I'll just give you a good, good tip. In the two, two, five, one licks, I'm using surrounding notes. I have made a recent video using approach and surrounding notes. I advise you to check this video. It describes how you find out how to use these surround and approach notes. Check the video right here. In the beginning of the clip, I played this wonderful solo on Lady Bird, Tad Dameron's Lady Bird. I've used some great bebop lines there. There are lots of 2-5 progressions in Lady Bird, so check the full transcription out on my Patreon page. Check my Patreon page, the full transcription on my solo on Lady Bird, where I use a lot of bebop scales. If you want my great saxophone practice PDF, Go to my website, subscribe to my newsletter, and you'll get a download link for my great saxophone practice PDF. Go in there www.sernbellegor.dk, subscribe to my newsletter, and get the great saxophone practice PDF. On my website, you can also find my shop. There are great lessons, there are online lessons, there are video exchange lessons. Check it out and get back to me. If you have comments, if you have questions, let me know in the description in the comments here below. All the links I've just mentioned here in the whole video are in the description below. The last thing there is to say is have fun and play music.